Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Chris here. In today's video, we're going to check out the all new exciting plugin from Universal Audio called Sound City. Let's dive into it. So as you've just heard, I've put that piece of music together just to demonstrate the sounds. Every instrument on that track has the Sound City plugin on it. We're going to dive into basically the plugin. This is my first time using it. I've just got it today and I'm very excited because I really enjoyed making that track. And after putting the plugin on everything, I was like, wow, this is very powerful. It's going to be super awesome to use and, and experiment with. So let's dive in. Wow, we really are in winter. That track was maybe an hour in the making and it just went from like light to dark instantly. Like I blinked and we're in winter. So just to get us started, obviously what you've heard has the plugin on every instrument. I've got, I've duplicated the song and I've removed the plugin just so you can hear what it sounds like with and without the Sound City plugin on it. So let's give that a listen real quick. I'm just gonna play from when all the instruments come in. Like from the get-go, obviously maybe the room one is a bit louder, but otherwise it's doing a lot of lifting. The track, you know, I can show you the actual elements on this. So there isn't really much processing going on at all externally from this plugin. I've got a guitar amp on the electric guitars, the acoustics, there's nothing, the bass and the piano, there's nothing. So it's mainly just the Sound City plugin you're hearing. As well with the drums, I've also muted any type of room ambience on the amps and the drums. So you're hearing the driest possible sound with an exception for the kind of droney guitar that I slapped on some reverb from here and some delay just to make it more ambient. But otherwise, it's all dry sounds. So let's start off with the acoustic guitar. I'm just going to play it soloed without this plugin on so you can hear what it sounds like dry. Get it on. So instantly you can hear there's a lot of this room sound incorporated. There is some slight processing going on with the EQ and the dynamics. The dynamics aren't really being touched at all. They're on, but there's nothing going on. And then the EQ, there's some slight mid boost, low cut and high boost. But bear in mind, a lot of this, I've basically just selected the source instrument dependent and I haven't really played too much with the settings I may be played with the room level but otherwise it's mostly default preset yeah going through it there's a lot on the screen there's a lot to see normally it looks like this very beautiful GUI as usual per UA standard and bear in mind 
I'm using all these tracks on the remic mode as opposed to the reverb mode. So what that means is all the sounds are being passed through the impulses that they've got on this. So there's no kind of wet dry, it's just all this sound. So taking a look at what we've got, you can see at the bottom we've got three sets of miking options. We've got close, room one and room two. In this case I've got all of them going. We've got the guitar PA tight source selected. And the difference between the tight and the live is they just remove the baffles, basically. You can hear that real quick, so I'll go from tight to live. So you can hear the room gets a bit tighter, as it says. And so moving on from there, we've got a lot of options with the microphones, so we can actually change the distance of how far or close they are. We can change, we've got a couple of options of microphones we can pick for the close ones, for the both rooms, and they're all different mics, which is lovely. As well, we've got an additional mixer on the side to balance all of the microphones. We've got some filtering, some phase flipping, the distance, as well as a mono, left-right swap, some pre-delay, and then just general volume control for everything. Then you go into here, and this is really interesting. This is the processing section of the plugin. So besides changing almost the space where the sound lives in, you also have the processing that is included in the Sound City Studios. So besides the sound of the room, you've also got the EQ, the dynamics, and a chamber, an additional reverb that you can slap on top of the room sound to really bring the life of Sound City to your track. So if you wanted to, you could actually just turn off the room. Here you've got your options for things you can turn on and off. You can turn off your room and you can just have the processing, which is also really powerful in itself because you've got a very interesting compressor, EQ, chamber, multi-effects all in one. You don't necessarily have to use it just for the room sound. If I play it with the room off, we just get the processing. Then I can turn off the processing. Here yeah, there's a nice amount of processing going on. It's making the sound generally a bit cleaner, a bit warmer, lovely stuff. And then we also have the option to put the chamber reverb on top of everything. lovely we've got some choice of microphones the distance i like that it's not besides the amount it's all pretty notched in the options so it doesn't keep you like fiddling for days you know there's obviously a lot going on in this plugin and i think the idea is not to get too lost in fiddling you've got some amazing presets as usual you've got a whole bank of presets to pick from that might save you a bit of time but otherwise it's all meant to be kind of click listen if you like it, stick with it, move on kind of thing. I'm gonna turn off that chamber for now and let's dive into one of the other instruments just to get a different example of what we've got. So I'm gonna go into the drums. I'm just using Superior Drummer here as my uh, drum sound. We can listen to this without the plugin. So this is a dry. And then with the Sound City plugin on. I mean, night and day. It sounds awesome. You're getting a real genuine response from the kick in that room, which I really like. Let's dive in. So I've got this obviously set to the drum source, but we've got a couple options. We've got live, tight, and corner. Corner is what I would say would give you the most kind of room vibe. It's almost the strongest sound of the room that you'd get. Let's quickly flick between them. So live. And then tight. And then corner. definitely get a lot of response in that low end sounding really lovely let's quickly flick through some of the mics just so you can hear what it's actually doing to to the sound i'm going to turn off the room mics we'll start with the close and we'll go through each of them so this is going front you can obviously change the distance
Awesome. And then you've got the first room. Sounding really lovely. I really like the response. You can actually change the polar pattern between cardioid and omni. On just the U67, because the other ones, one is just cardioid and the ribbon is just a figure of eight. And then lastly, in the second room option, sounds like this. Definitely getting a lot more of that room sound, a lot more distant. And we can start adding them all up. Just remember, we're coming from this. Oh, this is going to be so nice. I can't wait to try this on an actual kit that's recorded maybe in a small room just to give it a bit more life and see what it does to the overall drum sound. It's going to be super fascinating. So let's move on to the electric guitar, get a bit of a different example. So here we've got a couple of options for guitar source. We've got PA live, PA tight, and then we've got a 4x12 live and tight and a 2x12 live and tight. Right now I went for the 4x12 on the actual playing because I've got the more swelly kind of guitar sound which is thinner I went for the thicker 4x12 so let's give those a listen real quick <laughs> Lovely. And then if we move on to the swelly guitar sound. see you're definitely getting a couple different variations from the amps. They do sound really nice. I like that you have the option of the two. Overall, just sounding really great. I'm really digging the vibe of this. I would love to experiment with some of the processing, so I'm actually going to hop onto the piano. Something a little bit different. Let's try some processing out. So this is the piano sound. Again, we'll hear it dry and then with the plug-in. So this was the only instance I actually picked a preset because I was like, let me just try it out, see what they sound like. And this was the one I settled on, the big piano. Sounds really lovely. Just going to the processing. The only thing going on is the compression. The EQ and the chamber are off. And I forgot to mention as well, you can also shift the order of these plugins, which is quite nice. But yeah, so we just got the compression. Let's give that a play with and just see the sounds we can get out of it. fascinating that it changes you know depending which one of the modules you pick it's going to change the sound slightly i think it would be really nice to pair with the mix so we can get a good blend of the two and see what's actually going on so i'm just going to tuck the mix back to get a more dry sound and we'll just fit in the compression slightly to it
Lovely. Let's try add some EQ. Really lovely, very silky EQ. Let's try the chamber. Awesome. So you can see between all the different bits of processing, you can get some really lovely results. Again, even just excluding the room on its own, the processing can be super powerful and versatile, which I'm digging, really loving that. Okay, the last thing I want to try is just this in reverb mode. I'll pick maybe the ensemble. Let's get an instance of the plugin on an auxiliary. So we'll stick it onto reverb mode. And now what I can do is if I mute the room, we can just work without the room, the dry one. Let's just send some stuff to it and see what it sounds like. I haven't actually touched the plugin, we've left it on default. But let's just get all the rooms on, just so we've got a bit of life going into it. And let's see the sound we get. Start with the guitars. I'll actually just work with the groups to make it a bit easier. source. Just the rooms. So I just want to quickly compare what it sounds like having everything sent to one auxiliary as opposed to putting the plugin on every track. See, they're pretty different obviously one is adding more the essence of a reverb whereas one is adding more the essence of just using an impulse and and physically putting those instruments in the space i do really like what it's doing there is a slight difference in levels between the instruments because you're mixing it on the plugin probably adding a bit of gain here and there so it does sound slightly different but both instances are really awesome personally i'm a big fan of what it sounds like when you put the plugin on each track and then you kind of individually tailor it to that instrument. It sounds really lovely to me. I think there is a bit to say in terms of the context of how you would use it. I think it is important that whilst you're putting this plugin on, you're listening to the track as a whole because 
it might sound really good when you're listening to it in solo on a certain instrument and then you put it in the track and maybe it sounds a bit out of place so i think that having that context really helps but otherwise this is awesome like i don't have any anything bad to say i think it's it's a very cool plugin i really admire ua when they do something like this obviously they've got the ocean way plugin which has a similar effect to to this you can use it to remic your sounds and get a bit of that more organic room sound to your tracks but this is taking it to a whole new level and making it super creative and fun very inspiring i'm a big fan it sounds really cool i'm really digging it so there you go hopefully that wasn't too long i'm gonna try cut this down i'm looking at my timer and i'm here for about almost two hours now putting this thing together but otherwise it's been really cool i hope you enjoyed it if you did let us know in the comment section below i'd really appreciate to know what you guys thought about this plugin if you're going to use it on any of your tracks also don't forget to like and subscribe i really appreciate the support and thank you to anyone who's already done so and once again i've been chris fella and i'll see you on the next one bye Thank you.